Yesterday's rain has left us, thankfully, and we've got Sunshine in Raleigh, a beautiful sight for a doubleheader between number 22 Virginia Tech and NC State, which opened the series Friday night with a win here at home. And with that, we say hello and thanks for joining us alongside the former Carolina All-American and big leaguer Adam Greenberg. Mike Monaco with you. And Adam, it's been a breakthrough season for Virginia Tech, and they've got one of the best hitters in the country you might not have heard of yet in Gavin Cross. Yeah, if you haven't, you're in for a treat. Gavin Cross absolutely is one of the best hitters in the country. Look at that batting average, 454 hits and 99 total bases. According to Coach Chef, he is one of the best hitters in the country. He just allows things to roll off him. So he's coming off an 0 for 4, so I'm sure he's going to have a great And his team today. coming off a loss on Friday because NC State took the opener 3-1, and their leadoff man, Austin Murr, continued an excellent season. He certainly did. He got off quickly with a home run, putting the Wolfpack ahead 1-0, and he's just been doing it all year. Big home run. He had a, a late-inning double off the wall, so he is awesome. And that was plenty for their starter, Sam Highfield. Yeah, certainly was. Six and two-thirds, four hits, no runs. Sam Highfield doing what Sam Highfield does, loading up the strike zone all night and just dominating the Virginia Tech offense. Now, he pitched on Friday. Typically, that is Reed Johnston, who instead goes in game two of the series, game one of the doubleheader here today. Fourth-year junior righty from Enfield, North Carolina, making his fifth start of the year. Yeah, he's just a guy who's going to throw a lot of strikes, fastball, slider, changeup, good deception, and just tremendous focus. He's in his fourth year as a starter, but he's been a starter. He's been in the bullpen. He's been a closer, actually, all of those in the same season. Um, but, yeah, not too bad when you can fill in on Friday with Sam Highfield going no runs, and now you got Reed Johnson and all these guys for NC State. All their starters just end up going really, really deep into the ball game. And you're going to see a lot of pitches and a lot of strikes from Reed Johnston. Well, Virginia Tech, we told you, ranked 22nd in the country, but they dropped the opener Friday. They lost their series last weekend, so a big doubleheader for them. Gavin Cross has been tremendous, though he was quiet, like we said on Friday. TJ Rumfield is the Texas Tech transfer behind him, and Kevin Madden has been a clutch hitting machine for the Hokies, led by John Sheff. Yeah, this is a team that is just having themselves one heck of a season. 18 innings of baseball on tap. Doak Field at Dale Park, and off we go with a bunt foul from Jack Hurley. Temperatures at 65 degrees. We've got winds out of the north-northwest at 12 miles an hour, and that could help the bats today. Yeah, just get that ball up in the air. Look at that wind. Appetizing for any hitter, like an Adam Greenberg. Ball and a strike on Jack Hurley, true freshman who has settled in nicely atop the lineup for the Hokies, sitting at 21 and 13 overall, including 15 and 10. You see in the top left of your screen in the ACC. But trying to avoid back-to-back -back series losses by winning two today in this doubleheader. Yeah, this is important. I'd say certainly for Virginia Tech, they're looking for a number one seed. But if you're NC State, you're kind of on the on the brink. I mean, you've they've been playing really, really well, uh, mostly just getting the the victories. They've been playing well all year, especially their defense. But they're they're starting to get those wins piled up and trying to get into the regional play. Two two is tugged to Austin Murr who is excellent defensively. And there's one away for Reed Johnston to start the twin bill. It's an elite defense for NC State. To your point, Adam, they are third best in the country in fielding percentage. Yeah, and when you have pitchers that are going to load the zone, you better have a defense behind you that can pick it. And this NC State defense certainly can, as you mentioned, 985 third in the NCAA. So from a pitcher's perspective, you have all the confidence in the world. Throw strikes, pitch to contact, and that's why NC State has had so much success. We could show you all nine guys for NC State and nothing would change. Your eyes are not deceiving you. They are all wearing number 26 today as Tanner Schobel climbs in for Virginia Tech. And that's for a wonderful cause. 
It's the annual strikeout ALS game for the Wolfpack. And they honor the late Chris Combs, a former wonderful player here for the Pack. And we will hear more about that and his story and his impact after he passed away in the fall in between innings here. Yeah, what a great, great tribute to a great man and a great player. Two balls and two strikes on Tanner Schobel, who strikes out and a nice start for Reed Johnston. Yeah, great, great pitch right here. Just a little sinking two-seamer. And once again, if you're Virginia Tech, you're going to see a lot of strikes. And any pitch, any count, four strikes for Reed Johnston. Who starts with ball one, trying to stay away from one of the most fearsome hitters in not just the ACC, but like we said, in the country. In the second year freshman from Tennessee, Gavin Cross. You saw his numbers. He leads the ACC in average. Tied for first in hits with Boston College potential first rounder Sal Fralick. And leads the ACC in total bases with 99 already. Yeah, he's, he's just a guy with a great approach. Quiet in the batter's box, can hit the ball to all fields, hits righties and lefties just as well. Comes the one, two. And he sprays it foul. A couple weeks back, Gavin hit for the cycle. He's got the 10 big flies and a slugging percentage above 700. Another one, two on the way from Johnston. And Cross pulls this one into the wind and right toward the corner. Brown is back and he makes the catch up against the wall. So the ballpark holds Gavin Cross and it's a one, two, three inning for Reed Johnston. Well, we told you this is NC State's strikeout ALS game in honor of the former NC State standout, the late Chris Combs. Those who understand the significance of number 26 wanted Chris to see it in person. So on a sunny April afternoon, they took him to the newly decorated outfield wall. A moment to capture and remember with hugs, with kisses, with smiles. It was a small and personal celebration, not knowing if he would ever be able to make a return trip, not knowing what the next day, the next week, or the next month would be like. The smile on his face, what Francis and, and uh, Ryan still talk about, what it meant to him, gives me great pleasure and great joy knowing we got that done. Exactly five months to the day after his visit to Doak Field, Chris Combs passed away at the age of 45. What we will all take and what Chris Combs' lasting legacy will be for all of us is the pride, the dignity, and the courage which he battled this horrific opponent. Just a wonderful tribute to Chris Combs. Started NC State in the 90s. Elliot Avan has said just one of the best power hitters he has ever coached. Had the versatility to, to play all over the place. And they have raised a ton of money, multi-millions worth of dollars. You see Chris at the time there with his family. The hashtag strikeout ALS. And NC State fans can bid on the jerseys that Elliott Avent's team is wearing here today. And all funds raised will benefit Team Chris Combs, Project ALS, and the Wolfpack Club's Chris Combs Endowment. I don't know about you, but that video gave me chills. What a, what a tremendous, tremendous tribute. As we said, great man, great husband, great father, great player. Be sorely missed from this NC State program, but be remembered forever. And in less important stuff, move on to baseball. And 
NC State Baton for the first time here in the bottom of the first with Austin Murr, who we told you about off the top. Had a nice day on Friday. We'll see if Luca Tresh got off to the home run binge at the start of the season. Can he begin to heat up in the three hole for the pack as they face Anthony Simonelli, fourth year junior right hander for Virginia Tech? He's got a 3 4 7 ERA, make it his eighth start of the season. Yeah, Simonelli's going to pitch with a lot of energy and a lot of flair, um, but he manipulates his fastball. He cuts it, he runs it. And he's normally, that one maybe sunk too much there for ball four to Murr. Yeah, he's normally around the zone, and his, his last four outings have just been electric. He's had, uh, he had a little oblique injury earlier, so missed a little time, but having, having him back in this rotation has certainly been important, especially in the Saturday role. They've lost a couple games on Friday, and he's come in and, and shut the door on Saturday and gotten Virginia Tech back on track. He's going to try to do just that here in the first game of the twin bill. Again, after NC State took the Friday opener, but Tyler McDonough ropes one off the wall in right. Murr will stop at third, and the first two have reached off of Simonelli, and a fast start for the pack here in the first inning. Yeah, certainly is a, a fast start like they got off the other night, and Tyler McDonough hammers this ball in the right field for a double and continues that on base, that torrid on base streak for McDonough, whether it's finding his way on hit by pitch, walk, or here with a double. That's 48 consecutive games. That is absolutely incredible. <laughs> I know it was a shortened season last year, but all of last year, all of this year, he's been on base every time across these last couple of seasons, and the Wolfpack have something brewing here for Luca Tresh. As you mentioned, Tresh got off to that torrid pace. I think he had seven home runs in eight games. Um, but he's certainly one of the one of the better hitters in the conference and really established himself behind the dish as, as one of the better catchers as well. Yeah, it was seven home runs, like you said, in the team's first eight games of the year, and now just one in the last 22 games for NC State, which has been playing really well recently. 13 wins in their last 17 games off Friday's victory. Ball and a strike, Simonelli deals. If you're Simonelli right here, your, your goal is to play game management. You're not trying to, you don't have to strike everyone out. You have to get your outs and limit the damage. He's missed the zone with six of his first eight pitches so far. And that is spotted low and away. Three balls and a strike now. So a walk, a double, and a header's count. Three one pitch and a walk again to load him up. And Simon Ellie a little disappointed right there, but as as always the case, if you're not throwing a lot of strikes, you're certainly not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And Adam Dowdy did not give him the benefit of that three one fastball that was off the plate. You can see some of the emotion and the intensity from Simon Ellie out of Winchester, Virginia, northwest of DC. Guy who started his career at Coastal Carolina, then went to the JUCO ranks, and now in his second season with the Hokies. Brings up the cleanup man, Johnny Butler, with still nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. There's strike one from Simonelli. He finds the breaking ball, finally gets a, a feel for that right there. Getting ahead of one of the better hitters for this NC State team, Johnny Butler. You saw the OPS above 900. Best numbers of his three years here with the pack. And he's behind nothing and two. Yeah. 
Once again, the first first pitch I mainly threw for a breaking ball for a strike, then came back and threw an even tighter one. Butler fouled off. Murr, McDonough, and Tresh have reached to begin this first inning. 0-2. Oh, All breaking balls here from Simonelli. Yeah, ideally looking for a strikeout or induce that ground ball. Early action in game one of this doubleheader here at the Doak. One, two. And Butler could not hold up. He went around. And it is a strikeout for Simonelli and a huge first out in the first. And that ball just had serious run on it. Nice change up. And Butler just couldn't quite hang on. But that's the difference when you get ahead of the count and you get guys in defensive modes, then that pitch that starts on the plate that runs off, you can induce some sign of action. You see Butler saying that ball just ran, ran away. It sure did. And now right on right against Jose Torres and that tails to the outside corner. And so you said he will manipulate the fastball and he's done it these last couple of pitches. Yeah, he'll throw anywhere from 88 to 93 and that's with intent so if he wants to if he wants to sink it or run it he can do that if he wants to cut it he can do that and if he wants to stay high with the heater bouncer left side the shortstop Schobel will go to first for out number two but Murr scores and the pack strikes first yeah, nice play by Schobel and good job by Torres just putting that ball into play getting that first run across giving them a lead nice play right there coming in charging no real no real play anywhere else and early in the game Adam you, you just take the out right absolutely yeah you, you don't want to try to be too cute just get the out I mean it's a it's a long game got a lot of baseball I hope you're strapped in over there in Connecticut <laughs> oh yeah Terrell Tatum the batter here out of the sixth spot DH from Collierville Tennessee fourth year junior yeah, and Tatum's kind of found his little his groove takes downstairs 2-0 oh. he kind of struggled a little bit during the season early on and actually started sitting a little bit and tough to break into the outfield with uh with, with the outfielders with butler and mcdonough and brown but he certainly found a home in that dh role and having a really nice season simonelli's fighting his command in this first inning already a couple of walks now a three and zero count against tatum And you got yourself two outs, only one run with that bases loaded situation, and nobody out. Tatum flares this one toward left, and it drops down for a hit. McDonough and Tresh score, and it's a 3 nothing NC State lead. <laughs> and you see, you see Tatum shrugging his shoulders, going 3-0. Th that's exactly what I'm looking to do. I'm, I'm just looking to place it where they're not. So lo love the aggressiveness right there. <laughs> Gets completely jammed on a 3-0 pitch. But once again, in, in baseball, it's not how hard you hit it always. It's, it's where you can place it. So very aggressive against Simonelli right there with the base open and a 3-0 count. And see that? <laughs> sure, why not? The ball flight and the English on it was akin to Adam Greenberg going into his bag, taking out the 60-degree wedge, putting the club face wide open, and landing a flop shot on the green with some spin. <laughs> it's exactly what it's like. <laughs> Can you tell we like golf? Uh, here's Vojta Menchik, number seven hitter for NC State in the third baseman. As the pack have three runs off of Simonelli here in the middle game of the series. 
And Tatum certainly a threat to run. Simonelli keeping him close. And that was close. You see a good job. You always want to get back out into your lead quickly. You don't ever want to be slow getting that lead. Get yourself out there. So that he can't catch you while you're extending? Correct. So you're never quick, either quick pitched or he can quick pitch. So you see Simonelli did does have really quick feet. He's got a quick move. And Tatum so took the brunt of this. He's slow to get up. Oh, you don't like to see that. They're looking at his jammed. right hand. Jammed his hand into the bag going back. I mean, it was athleticism on both sides. The move from Simonelli and then the dives back from Tatum. Uh, a little more dynamic on both sides than your traditional pickoff. Yeah, money throw. You'd see it just jammed his wrist in that back of the bag. Mm. Yeah, it didn't, didn't feel good. And frustrating for sure for Tatum because, as you said, he has been heating up. When we saw this NC State team a few weeks back against Clemson, he was really scuffling. He had a very high strikeout rate, but he has trimmed that. Coming into today, 14 for his last 37. But right around a 380 clip for him as Elliot Avent came out to pay some attention to him. 25th season at the helm for the legendary head coach here in Raleigh. Yeah, now is, now is when you take off. Oh, we just heard from Adam Dowdy, home plate umpire. That's a warning to Simonelli on the time between pitches. I guess when you got 18 innings, you, you want to set the precedent for pace of play. <laughs> yeah, but what I, what I was mentioning is right after that you know, injury timeout is, is when you usually want to just take off that next pitch. You got a nice high leg kick from Simonelli. So let's see if. That grabs the edge. Manchik doesn't like it. And Tatum's staying put for now. Yeah, and that staying put probably because those couple pickoffs were, were pretty close. So see some confidence waver a little bit when you're when you're on first base and you get. Two balls and two strikes to count now on Menchik. Three runs in for the Wolf Pack here in the bottom of the first. And Simonelli at 25 pitches and counting. Good breaking ball, just, just missed. Coach Chef not too happy about that that call right there. Simonelli's thrown as many balls as Reed Johnston threw total pitches in the top of the first. 15. The payoff. Man, Sheik stings one the opposite way, but that hangs up for Cross, and the inning is over. The pack sends seven to the plate and gets three runs, and Terrell Tatum might have the wrist or hand bothering him a bit. But after he did this, he got jammed, but he drove in two for the pack. Well, it's a 3 nothing deficit for John Shev in the first inning of the doubleheader today. But what a season and what a turnaround it has been for Virginia Tech in his fourth season at the helm. Left Maryland after he had taken them to a couple of Supers, replaced Patrick Mason, and he said to us, look, it's taken us maybe three and a half years to build this thing, but he feels good about where his team is at this year, especially because they've dealt with a bunch of injuries as well. Yeah, they are not at full strength, have not been at full strength, so he certainly believes that once everyone comes back, I mean, they're just, they haven't played their best baseball, and they're, you know, they've certainly had a, a good wins and loss so far, and he's really excited. 
especially with guys like T.J. Rumfield in the in the lineup, doing what he does best, just get get hits. A backside single for Rumfield, the cleanup man and the first baseman, and a transfer who spent his first two years at Texas Tech, immediately eligible and one of the big bats in the middle of the lineup for John Sheff. Yeah, he he's just a tremendous hitter, great discipline, great approach, and he's not just had a good year for himself, but he's also enabled Gavin Cross with some protection behind him. Well, behind Rumfield is Kevin Madden, third-year sophomore third baseman out of Glenwood, Maryland, west of Baltimore. Doesn't strike out a whole lot, and boy, has he had big hits this season. He's had a pair of walk-offs in a non-conference matchup against VCU, had an RBI single in the bottom of the ninth inning. That was part of a four-hit day for him, part of an 8-2 and two start to the season for Virginia Tech at the time. That one rides inside from Reed Johnston. And then in the middle game of a series against Boston College in the beginning of April, Madden had a two-run walk-off single in the bottom of the ninth inning of that game to win it as the Hokies came back in the ninth. So I'd call him clutch. I think so. That works a four-pitch walk here. And the first two have reached for the Hokies, similar to what NC State did in the home first. Yeah, rare for Reed Johnston to miss the zone that badly on four pitches, so I'm sure he'll take a deep breath, settle down. But this NC State pitching staff has just been incredible. These starters just going so deep into games. Out of ability and some necessity as well as Reed Johnston will now face Tanner Thomas, fifth-year senior left fielder from Jacksonville. It is not a deep NC State bullpen as Luca Trash will come out to chat with Johnston. They've dealt with injuries and some other issues out there. Clint Chrysler, third-year pitching coach, comes out as well. And so they've had to lean so heavily on the starters and between your three weekend starters and your midweek starter, and then really one guy who is consistently getting high leverage outs in the bullpen in Evan Justice, NC State is riding those five guys quite a bit. Yeah, to, to say the least. I mean, they only have five guys with more than 10 innings on the season. So these, these, <laughs> these are their five guys. And there was a stretch they had five pitchers in four games. I mean, that, that's unheard of. Through the, a full weekend and then a midweek game, they only had five pitchers. So, I mean, just really tremendous job by these guys specifically up on the board. 76% of the innings you saw from those guys, and now it's six straight out of the zone from Johnston, who's been a workhorse for him, but fighting his command after he had a one, two, three first inning. Yeah, I mean, a, a great inning, and then Rumfield broke it up, and now Johnston's really struggling to find that zone. Relocates it there for strike to Thomas. Veteran hitter, a great leader, and a quality person. That's what John Sheff said to us in chatting about Tanner Thomas, the left fielder. Fouls it off two and two. And really good eye black. Really yes. good eye black. It's like the perfect smear, no? Yeah, I mean, I've seen seen a few different uh, few different shades kind of flowing down right into the beard so it's, it's good work it's kind of controlled chaos there <laughs> you know he spreads it but it's it's not rough and rowdy like a lunatic defensive tackle if you're watching ACC football this year you might have seen Kurt Heinisch a defensive tackle for Notre Dame he went with like the Daniel Stern in Home Alone approach where his whole face was covered. 2-2. <laughs> Thomas in the air towards center. 
McDonough drifts back. Wynn kept carrying that one, so it allows Rumfield to tag and move to third, and Madden moves up to second. Yeah, and really, really good base running there by, by Madden. You see McDonough just continuing to just track back. As you mentioned, that wind was carrying that ball, so McDonough was not able to get behind it and catch it coming in and prevent Madden from moving up from first to second. So good job recognizing the opportunity and taking full advantage. Now you got two guys in scoring position with less than two outs. So two out there, like you said, for Nick Bittison. 30-year sophomore second baseman from Glen Allen, Virginia, just outside of Richmond. Gets dropped down to the seventh spot in the lineup today for John Sheff. Just his 10th game back after a late start to his season because of left shoulder surgery. Yeah, and this is a kid that can play anywhere. Coach Sheff said he can play catcher, can play shortstop play center field, he can lead off or hit fourth. Swings at the 1-1 into right. Should be deep enough. Devontae Brown makes the catch. Rumfield tags. So does Madden and Virginia Tech's on the board. And it's exactly what you're looking for if you're Bittison, just get that ball up in the air. Ball's not carrying to right as well as it is center and left but does the job nonetheless and gets Virginia Tech back on the board answering NC State. So two down for Reed Johnston. Still Madden over at third to worry about. And he will work out of the windup to Cade Swisher with ball one, the second year freshman DH. Been a productive guy for him out of the eight hole with an OBP right around 390. That is some nice length in a lineup. Pretty good dugout chirps here. 1-1. One, one. Runs up and away. Yeah, a little, little frustration from... Johnston right there. Just not able to locate where he wants. Like to get out of this inning and go sit down and take a deep breath. And if you're Cade Swisher, you're looking to get that run in. Oh, snaps in a good one. Yeah, as you mentioned, this lineup for Virginia Tech, I mean, top to bottom, they just, they've got really, really good, good hitters top to bottom. A lot of power. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. Tresh will fire to first to complete the strikeout. And Reed Johnston limits the damage. Virginia Tech gets one on the sack fly from Bittison to get on the board. ACCN and the ESPN app at 7 Eastern. It'll be the first game of the weekend series in the Commonwealth clash between Virginia and these number 22 Hokies. All three games of the weekend, in fact, will be on the call for here on ACCN Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 6. That'll be a big series in the Commonwealth of Virginia with the Cavaliers playing a whole lot better. They have already locked up a series victory in their matchup with Duke before the finale today. Yeah, they are within striking distance. I mean, the, the talent's there, and they're starting to come together. Those bats are starting to come to life. See Simonelli falls behind again already. Devontae Brown just misses that 2-0 heater. Simonelli's only thrown first pitch strikes to three of the eight bat batters he's faced so far. Had to throw 27 pitches in the first inning. But two balls and two strikes now on Brown. And that is just off the edge and low and a full count. It's a good spot, but he's 
Adam Dowdy's been consistent. <laughs> Simonelli, I think, thought it was a strike. <laughs> this is bounced right side. Rumfield gobbles and retires Brown. And there's one away. All's well that ends well, Anthony. Well, brings up JT Jarrett, who had a fun weekend last weekend out in South Bend against Notre Dame, which did take the series. But, of course, his father, Link Jarrett, the Notre Dame head coach. Yeah, what a cool, cool picture and cool opportunity to get to see your dad and play against him. Speaking of Notre Dame, what they did last night sort of defies logic. <laughs> they were down 9 nothing at one point in the rubber game of their series with Boston College. And in the eighth inning, Notre Dame sent 17 batters to the plate. They scored 12 runs in the eighth inning. And JT's father, their club, came back and won. So they took both games of the doubleheader yesterday. After they had lost, you saw 10-0 on Friday. Yeah, I mean, that, so it's 19, 19 runs to zero runs. And you come back and you win that game. I mean, it's just really uh, <laughs> remarkable what they did. Boston College, now, they've, they've done it a couple times this year to opponents, specifically Auburn. The, the first game, they came back from eight runs down late. But, yeah, tr just tremendous year that Notre Dame's put together. And Link Jarrett, and he's got his team clicking on all cylinders. But the ACC with Virginia Tech, with Pitt, Notre Dame, all three of those teams were projected to finish last or second to last in the conference. And having wonderful seasons. I mean, this Virginia Tech team right now is in first in the Coastal. And they were picked second to last, to your point, in the Coastal. And they were only ahead of Pitt. Pay on pitch. Inside, and Jarrett works a one-out walk from the nine hole. A good at bat from Jarrett. Fouled a couple pitches off, took a couple close pitches. I think there's some disagreements on what this zone is. You see John Chef. What a season they've had to this point. 34 games in, coming into the doubleheader today. For a program that's only been to regionals two times in the last 20 years, and they've not been since 2013 which was Pete Hughes' final season before he left for Oklahoma. John Chef is a tremendous man and, a, and an incredible coach and just really knows how to build up programs. I mean, he's done it throughout his entire career, everywhere he's gone, starting at Marist. Why'd you stiff where, him in the recruiting process? Where, where many moons ago, I was on a recruiting trip with Coach John Chef at Marist. And it was one of my most difficult phone calls uh, during that process, just because of the connection that he and I had. And I was like, this this would be a great guy to play for. Yeah. Seven seasons there as the head coach. Wave and a miss. Good breaking ball as Anthony Simonelli gets a big second out by fanning the leadoff man, Austin Murr. And just a difference getting ahead once again and then able to throw that breaking ball. Starts as a strike and just disappears back foot. And strikes out a, a great hitter in Austin Murr. So two down now for Tyler McDonough, who ripped the double and then later scored in the three-run first inning. And there you go with Simonelli. Get, it, get ahead. I mean, he has the stuff. But the difference is a pitcher, ahead versus behind. So ahead of McDonough. And Simonelli trying to make it a score of the second. Got to be careful extending leads over there. Yeah, he, he not only has quick feet, but he, he throws about 100 miles an hour over the first base. 
McDonough's six for nine. Stealing bags, or should say, JT Jarrett, a threat to go. That's up and away. Yeah, and there's no reason to get too big of a lead with a guy that has such a good move, but as we mentioned, he, he is a little slower to the plate in Simonelli. He gets that big leg lift. Trying to back foot McDonough. That's a nasty pitch. He went to the breaking ball to strike out. Austin Murr, another lefty. Simonelli's been terrific his last few starts as McDonough hits it through the whole right side and knock for him. His second hit, and Jarrett goes first to third with two down. And the Pack have something going again here in the second. I tried to come in right there. See McDonough pull his hands in. Get to the barrel, get that barrel on the ball and find the hole. And with Jared on first base, you definitely have that hole. So two aboard for Luca Tresh. Worked a walk his first time. Came in to score on the two-run single from Terrell Tatum. Can Simonelli escape a bind here in the second? Ball one. All righty, 40, 47 pitches. Simonelli's not, not a, against throwing a lot of pitches, but you want to be a little bit more efficient. He said he's been a guy who's really good recently. Had missed a few starts earlier with what you said, Adam, earlier, the oblique issue. But in all but one outing this year, he's given up three earned runs or fewer. And two earned runs or fewer in five of his seven starts. And this is what he had done in his last four coming in with an ERA right around 2-4. Yeah, I mean, you can't do much better <laughs> in his last four starts. And huge shot in the arm for Virginia Tech getting him back and, and healthy. Um, just struggling a little bit, mostly with the zone today. And uh, but at any point, I mean, if stuff's good enough. You could just find his release point, find that zone, and getting ahead, he'll have a lot more success. 1-0 pitch to Trash, and he tried the breaking ball again, and it's 2-0. Trash has Trish. come through in big spots throughout this season. Though he's been scuffling a bit recently. Has started every game. Starting catcher for the Wolfpack. Simonelli's 2-0. And that's a good 2-0 pitch right there. Two-seamer riding back across the outer black and Tresh not able to do anything with it. Just fouls it off. Two one. Trying to find the release point and clearly frustrated. Seventh three ball count now for Simonelli. And he's faced 12 batters. Jared at third, McDonough at first, three one. Is away and it's ball four. So two walks in the first, two more here in the second. And they're loaded up. Yeah, just very uncharacteristic for Simonelli. And if you're NC State, right now is when you, you need to strike. So Johnny Butler has got himself an opportunity, struck out in the first inning. He's got another opportunity with the bases loaded. Simonelli went down and away with a fastball to fan Butler's first time, and he starts him out 
with a swinging strike one here. Simonelli has had a few outings this year where the walks have crept up. You see Butler's been a good bat all year in the cleanup spot for NC State. But Simonelli walked for two outings ago at Wake. And back early on in the season, late February at Miami, he walked five. Twenty-seven pitches in the first, and the twenty-seventh again here in the second. Butler rips it past the dive of Bittison into right field. Jarrett's in to score. McDonough comes to the plate as well, and Butler drives in two. Yeah, and that time Butler stayed on, stayed on it, and just drove it through the right side. Short, compact, went down and got it. And two more really, really big runs for NC State. Looking to really solidify themselves as a contender to get into the postseason play. And a big series win would, would certainly move them up the ranks. All right, it's not even 1 o'clock yet here in the afternoon. And we've got a lot of baseball left in this game, obviously, sitting here in the bottom of the second inning. But if NC State were to win, they lock up the series, to your point, and it would continue some really strong play recently as Jose Torres lands that one foul just out of the reach of TJ Rumfield in the extended dugout there. John Sheff is not happy about it. Looking for an interference call. Let's have another look at it. So Rumfield going into NC State's dugout. You see a problem there? I mean, I think there has to be intent. I don't I don't think anyone tried to necessarily really help by getting out of the way. Good. but it didn't appear as anyone did anything intentionally to interfere. Because remember, that ball is in foul territory, in it's out of play, and Rumfield can reach over, this, over the fence. Jose Torres into the gap in left center, and it drops down in front of Hurley. Tresh scores to make it 6-1, and the Wolfpack add on. Another, not a terrible pitch, but Torres goes down and goes down to get it. Gets himself a hit, and Torres <coughs> really turned himself into, or turned himself into a much better hitter. Struggled early on. He also had an injury, an oblique injury, so wasn't really at full strength and has been getting stronger and stronger throughout this year. Highly, highly touted shortstop. And he makes it three runs all with two outs here for the Wolfpack in the second inning and here's Terrell Tatum who drove in two the opposite way on a jam shot in the first yeah good to see him back in the batter's box after he jammed his his hand and his wrist so imagine it's not that bad pretty healthy hack there it appears yeah it appears not to have any issues they were looking between innings after that sequence where he had dove back to the base at first. They were looking at his fingers in some way between innings on the right hand. 0-2. Oh, if you're wondering, nobody up in the Virginia Tech bullpen. And again, this is game one of a doubleheader today. 
Yeah, there's a lot of baseball, as you said. 60 pitches in, even though Simonelli struggled. I mean, I would imagine he's going to be out there through 90, 100 pitches almost no matter what. Bouncer to first. Rumfield snares this one, and the inning is over. NC State leaves two, but they add on three more. Johnny Butler pulled one to right to score two, and Jose Torres makes it a 6-1 state lead. Jose Torres, just like Johnny Butler, with a two-out knock to score some runs for the Wolfpack in the second, and a 6-1 lead for NC State as we embark on the third inning here at Doak Field at Dale Park on a comfortable April Sunday here in Raleigh. 9-1 and 2 for Virginia Tech, starting with the catcher, Dane Leonard. Takes strike one from Reed Johnston, who had a long wait in between half innings. And a 34-pitch second for Anthony Simonelli. See the numbers for Leonard, who has stepped in as the starting catcher due to the injury to Cade Hunter about a month ago when Hunter suffered a broken hamate bone against Clemson. And John Sheff had a lot of praise for what Leonard has done since taking over. Yeah, he certainly has. Um, not just at the at the plate, but certainly attributes a lot of the success to these Virginia Tech pitchers to what he's doing behind the dish and really commanding the the zone and, and receiving really well and keeping balls in front of him. So just. Nothing but high praise from Coach Chef. And Dane's got the board shorts rocking. <laughs> Those are over the over the knees. It's a new new thing. You weren't doing that. Over the, like, no. <laughs> I've seen it a couple times already this year. It just. Do you wear them long? Oh no no no. No, but just just below the knee. <laughs> below the knee. I mean, I just kind of say it like this. If, if I'm going to go run, would you rather run in pants or shorts? If you're going to sprint, what are you going to do? <laughs> Not jeans. I'll take the shorts. There's a strikeout for Johnston on a backup slider that gets Leonard. Three Ks now for Johnston, his first trip through the order. As you said, that just backed up, but... Too, too close for Leonard to, to take. Not a pitch you want to swing at, but one you just want to foul off and just say, give me give me one more. So instead of having your, your pants go all the way down to the ankles, you want them a little higher, and you think that that leads to better running. Absolutely. Think about it. it it's actually a pretty compelling case. Run in pants or, or sprint in pants or sprint in shorts. 100%. I've never really thought of it that way. I've thought of it more as a, a personal preference, um, you know, in terms of aesthetics. And I'll tell you, here's another thing that most people don't understand, realize. When, you're, when you do have them bunched up right up under your knee, mm. it also gives you a little extra padding on the slide. Mm. So you always cut up your knee on, on slides like that? Is that oh a, my God. a trouble spot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jack Hurley, the leadoff man, pops one up in foul ground, and avoid to Menchik is always sure-handed. Two quick outs for Johnston. And this is exactly what NC State and Reed Johnston was looking for. When you, when you put up numbers behind you, getting back on the mound and throwing strikes, getting quick outs and getting your team back out. He struggled in the second inning with, with that. He got some runs and struggled, and now is starting to find his groove looks pretty good starting with strike one to Tanner Schobel the excellent true freshman shortstop began the year at second base but with Bittison back and slotted in at second Schobel has jumped over to short playing better than Fritz Genther really talented player who will certainly be a part of this tech team down the road that one is ruled foul in the box on Schobel. Yeah, I like that by Schobel. He showed it the first time. Menchik didn't didn't come in, so he wasn't wasn't honoring the bunt. So went with it again, but just just 
rushed it a little bit. This is almost running as it's hitting. You got to bunt, then run. Flares the 1-2 to center, and it's a 12-pitch 1-2-3 inning for Reed Johnston and a shutdown frame in the third. Tanner Schobel just flew out to center to end the top of the third. And look, credit this guy for hustling. You're staring down a five-run deficit. He was busting it on what he knew was probably a fly out. And we saw this a few times in the opener Friday. Guys lost their footing around the base pads. Yeah, I mean, but I'm going to go back to the hustle, right? Just going hard. It's, it's, a, it's a fly ball, routine fly ball to center field. But anything can happen with the wind or whatever. I missed it. You always want to be on second base. Unfortunately, he didn't quite make it, but that's that's the approach and that's the hustle. And especially down 6-1 and double header, I mean, just it's good coaching and good hustle. If you're John Chef, don't you love to see that? <laughs> well, you love the hustle. You don't love to see the Well, yeah, ball, the ball, hustle. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just No, no it, it's not, it, it is not true. big but, league in a shallow fly out. No, but that that's the difference of a of a of a winning team, somebody that buys into that approach. Wow, beautiful knuckle curveball there from Anthony Simonelli, who freezes Voita Menchik to start the home half of the third. Yeah, that's just that's just nasty. And once again, though, get this is this is hopefully for Simonelli where he could just settle down. Doesn't matter what the score is. Your objective is to keep the team in the game and just stay out there as long as possible. Oh boy. Ooh, a little stare down too <laughs> from Adam Dowdy at the end of that. <laughs> and that's not what you're looking for. This has not been the most harmonious first three innings. Anthony Simonelli has got a little something to say on the mound too, muttering to himself still. I mean, it's not like he yanked the fastball out of the left-hand box. It was, a, it was a little bit off the plate, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a late time call. And n no, no pitcher, I mean, no pitcher likes when there's a late time call. I mean, listen, you, you call time, you call time. There's, there's no need to be emotion on either side, from the umpire standpoint or Simonelli. I mean, it just, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was intentionally being thrown at Adam Dowdy for sure. <laughs> You can also understand Adam Dowdy uh, stopping to look out there for a moment because he's, oh, yeah. I don't know, 94 coming at your kneecap. In any event, yeah. it is three balls and a strike here on Devontae Brown batting for the second time after he rolled out the first to begin the second. 6-1 NC State, home half of the third. And a walk. That's five of them for Simonelli. Simonelli's had a really good season for this Virginia Tech squad. Came in with opponents hitting just 178 against him. And remember, this Virginia Tech team is without, once again, the guy that Anthony calls the best pitcher on the team, Chris Girard. He's had a groin issue that's popped up a couple different times now, so this would be a, a start on the weekend for him, as is normally the case. But a fourth start that he's missing. John Chef told us he's, he's not in a great place for this weekend and said going forward it's it's sort of a day-to-day -day thing. Yeah, not something if you're Virginia Tech, you want to really push Gerard out there. I mean, that, those, those groin injuries, groin pulls, they can just linger. So you want to make sure you're 100% healthy because you need him for not just the regular season but the postseason. Jared bunts one, Simonelli fields and fires. Now Rumfield checks on Brown, who is there safely. JT Jarrett, one of the best bunters in the country, lays, lays down a bunt. 
trying for a hit there. Go back to the top now for Austin Murr with Elliot Avens bunch up by five. They scored three runs in a 3-1 win on Friday. 6-1 here in game one of the twin bill. Burr had a nice day. We told you about off the top in that Friday win. A home run bullet and a double off the wall in left center. One-0 -oh pitch. There's that knuckle curve again. Simon Ellie's really changed his pitch mix in his two years with Virginia Tech. He has bought into the analytics that Virginia Tech places such an emphasis on. There's a good knuckle curve there. And he's worked with the pitching coach, of course, Ryan Fecto, in his fourth season on staff with John Sheff. And Simon Ellie's got a nice cutter he throws, a changeup. Good velo with his fastball. We've told you about the knuckle curve. Nice four pitch mix for him. Yeah, mainly the ability to manipulate that fastball. And when it's when it's going well, the ability to cut it, run it, and he's got enough velocity that he can pitch up in the zone as well. And then that makes that that knuckle curve starting starting high, starting at the top of the zone and just barreling out. I mean, he's, he's, he's got some a great mix, but just really hasn't been able to find that consistency yet today. Leonard couldn't hang on to that one. And for Simonelli, he's coming off his best outing of the season against Georgia Tech on Saturday. Six innings of shutout ball, two hits, and a half dozen punch outs for the righty. Yeah, I mean, he was he was on point. As I mentioned, threw a lot of pitches, but was was getting ahead most of most of the game. Murr the opposite way, and he flares it in the left, and it kicks away from Tanner Thomas. Brown scores easily with two outs, and Murr is at second base, wagging the finger, and it's seven-one pack. Yeah, we see we saw Murgo big fly on Friday, and then you see why he's hitting over 330 right there. Just sticks that bat out on a pitch out over the plate, and gets himself a, a two out RBI. <laughs> that one kept on a line getting closer and closer to Thomas, but tried to play it off the short hop and then the deflection away. Likely would have scored Brown anyway on just the single portion of it. And Ryan Fecto will come out to chat with Simonelli here in the third inning. The Wolfpack has scored in each of these three innings against the reliable right-hander for Tech. And that's the end of the day for Simonelli. Jonah Herney, the sophomore lefty from Hawaii, is coming on to replace Simonelli in the third. We're back after this. Fourth outing of the season for the left-hander from Hawaii who spent the last couple of seasons at the JUCO ranks, Jonah Herney. And Herney's objective here is to obviously keep the score where it is, but even equally as more important is to give this Virginia Tech team innings. You see only three on the year, but he's going to be asked to give him as many as he can because you got the doubleheader today and still a lot of baseball left. 
Well, John Sheff got two and two thirds out of Anthony Simonelli. Six hits for now, all seven runs to him. Five walks, three punch outs, 76 pitches from the right hander. And the final damage done by Austin Murr, who had the single and then moved to second on the error by Thomas. Game one of a twin bill will get the second game started in theory right around 4 o'clock Eastern time. And you can watch that one over on ACC Network. We'll have that one for you over on the Linear Network. And NC State right now is thinking series win before that finale. Yeah, they, they certainly are. They got the, the, the big Friday win. And now coming out early and often in the first game of this doubleheader as you mentioned it'd be really i mean it's not not important for virginia tech to get the uh, the win here but from a standing standpoint and a postseason standpoint really important for nc state to get this this series win against a a great opponent and a, and a ranked team Switch hitter McDonough batting from the right side for the first time after he had good success against the righty in Simonelli. Yeah, with a win today in this first game for NC State, if the score were to hold, long way to go. That would make it 14 wins in the last 18 games for NC State, which headed into the weekend, according to D1 Baseball. We said this, the Wolfpack regarded as one of the first five out in the D1 baseball postseason projection from regionals. Wave and a miss. Two strikes now on McDonough. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see... I mean, if they continue playing this way, there's no way they're going to be out of the tournament. But you have to... In the, in the gauntlet of the ACC, with the, the talent that's there, you, just, you have to just keep winning. I mean, they, they dug themselves such a hole. I mean, they were the top 15 nationally ranked to start the season. So the talent is certainly there. And, and the wins are starting to pile up. And when we were chatting at earlier points in the year with Elliot Avent, he was saying to us, look, yeah, we didn't play that great against Georgia Tech here at home the first weekend of ACC play. We got a long way to go. But he said after that, you know, even though they lost a, a few against Miami, he thought they were playing well at that point. And so even though right now you look at the conference record, top of your screen, 10 and 12, he feels like they've been playing some pretty good baseball for the better part of the conference season. That is roped past the jumping Kevin Madden at third and all the way to the wall. Tyler McDonough's third hit in three innings scores Austin Murr, and it is 8-1 NC State. Yeah, have yourself a day, Tyler McDonough. I mean, he is just crushing everything. And Madden couldn't quite get up high enough to make that catch. McDonough easily in there with a double. So Herney was working him away and just caught, caught a little too much of the, the plate. McDonough able to extend, his, extend himself and get himself a big double. McDonough came into this game with an OPS above 950. He's had a really nice season. Productive bat out of the two spot in front of Luca Tresh. Tresh popped it up in the left center, and Hurley puts it away. And the inning is over. But NC State adds on and leads 8-1 after three. It's the start of the NFL Draft. Tune in as the college football stars of today hear their names called to be the newest members of the National Football League. You can catch all the action from Cleveland starting Thursday at 8 p.m. Virginia Tech's got a couple of guys who might be going in the first round. Mel Kuyper Jr. and Todd McShay came out with a three-round mock draft earlier this week. 
And they have Christian Derrissaw going 13th to the Chargers. Caleb Farley, the corner, they had him going 20th to the Bears. What do you remember, Adam, about getting the call to get drafted to the bigs? Or to the to Pro Bowl, I should say. <laughs> it was, that would have been impressive, uh, straight out of college to Pro Bowl, yeah. to, the, to the big leagues. No, mine was, mine was interesting because I got... I, I was told that the Cubs were one team that was not going to draft me. I wasn't their type of player. They had too many outfielders. I was too small for them. Uh, Gavin Cross ropes one into the shift. JT Jarrett on the backhand retires him. One away. Hits Gavin Cross. Hits another ball right in the screws. Just missed a home run in the first inning. And crushes this ball right into the shift to shallow right field. Yeah, and he's 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 been just hitting the ball on the screws and and really if you're if you're NC State, now Gavin Cross has come up six times and zero runners on base. So I mean that's the, that's, that's a good formula if you're NC State pitching. But anyway, back to the me and my my phone call it was just uh very mixed emotions to say the least it was e ecstatic obviously but when the cubs called after knowing that they were one team that was not going to draft me i was like wait what they 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 want me <laughs> but it was uh certainly the start of a dream come true you got fake pumped a little bit yeah i mean but at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter what, what anyone says about you. You, you, get a, you get an opportunity, you get a jersey, you get to bring the glove, the cleats, and the bat, and, and it's on you. You got, you, got, you got to perform no matter where you are at any level. So opportunities are what we make of them. T.J. Rumfield is a draft-eligible guy, third-year college player, first year with Virginia Tech. Reed Johnston thought he struck out Rumfield there, two and two the count. Rumfield a couple of years, like we said, at Texas Tech. In the air to left, Butler back, two down. How about this NC State pitching staff? I mean, just continuing to just pump the zone saying here it is hit it i've got a defense behind me with a 985 fielding percentage third in the country so i know my guys are going to make plays and i mean the confidence that must instill in all of these pitchers hmm. and no one came out and went one two three in the first inning second inning gave up a leadoff single then walked kevin madden who bats here. And since then, no one's reached against Reed Johnston. Yeah, you can see he's just completely in control of this game right now. Looking to make it another 1-2-3 inning. His 0-2. Bounced foul right at the dish. Sam Highfill. We had a impressive outing. No runs on Friday night. He's got the mechanical pencil working. Bouncer left side and foul. Yeah, Highfield was really good. Six and two thirds, part of a 3 1 win. Got that Friday start. And these guys have shouldered the load. For the guy to the left of Sam Highfill, the head coach, Elliot Avent. Ray Johnston has made four starts before today. He's got at least six and two thirds in all of them. Madden in the air to left. Busy inning for Johnny Butler, and it's back to back 12 pitch, one, two, three innings for Reed Johnston. Nine in a row set down. Eight runs so far for NC State, and Adam Greenberg, seven of them have come with two outs for the pack. Yeah, I mean, just absolutely impressive. Staying on balls, two, two outs, a lot with two strikes. I mean, this is just six for nine, 667 with two outs. I mean, up and down the lineup, 
They've been putting together these tremendous at-bats and a, a big, big game and a big opportunity for a series win. Saw Johnny Butler what he did in the second to make sure that that inning didn't go to waste. And he leads off here as we start the bottom of the fourth inning facing Jonah Herney, who came on to face two batters at the end of the third in place of the starter, Anthony Simonelli. Two and zero to start out against Butler, fourth year junior from the southwest suburbs of Chicago. An OPS above 900 for him coming in. He smoked the ball in the second inning on Friday that ricocheted into an out. So an offer for him, but didn't indicate maybe how well he's been seeing it. And we saw him hit it hard his last time like we showed you. Yeah, he's just had himself a, a tremendous year. And he's just a really good hitter with a, with a great approach. He sits... Looks, looks the middle the other way, so you can't really, you're not going to see him pulling off many pitches. And that's why you see the average over 300. How do you like the nickname Johnny Barrels? <laughs> I mean, says 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 a lot. Says all you need to know. There's a strike and a full count. Johnny Barrels looking a Johnny Bunt. With a 3-1 count, once again, take what the defense has given you. See the defensive alignment playing way back, so all you'd have to do is just get that bunt down. 3-2. Butler in the air, struck it well. The deep setter sending Hurley back, and it's gone! Johnny Butler's got a leadoff home run to start the fourth inning. Now, we saw something like that last night where you, you have a, a bunt attempt, you get the defense off a little bit, and then Butler just goes down and absolutely mashes this ball dead center field for a home run. His fifth of the season. A rocket to center. It's a 9-1 lead and so much for a two-out offense. Johnny Butler will just start the inning. Thank you very much. And yeah, you're right. We saw it last night when we were calling Florida State at Georgia Tech where Matt Nelson, who leads the country in home runs as Jose Torres stands in, had squared to bunt. And then the next pitch, he homered. It was his 17th home run. Maybe an act of surprise by him. And so that game, by the way, last night, it got suspended, as we well know, in the eighth inning. They were set to conclude it today at noon and then follow with the finale of that series. Florida State hung on to win game two of the series, the resumption of that game from last night. And in game three of the series, in the first inning, guess who homered? Matt Nelson again. He has 18 home runs. Torres the opposite way to right, but Cross is there. There's one away. 18 home runs for Matt Nelson. Leads the country. Yeah, let's just get back to that bunt, though. So so he he didn't just So is it square. actually a bunt, or is it, hey, there's three it's, balls, I'm square? Oh, no, no, no. He was... It's a bunt. I think he was trying to, I think he was trying to bunt. I mean, it's eight to one. What, and you're, not, you're not trying to walk there. You're trying to get a base hit. Three, one. You're not saying, I want to walk. Um... But yeah, I mean, Matt Nelson squared the bunt, fouled it off. Nice backhand play by Nick Bittison, but the throw not in time to get the speedy Terrell Tatum, who's on with one out. Yeah, great play, but no, no chance with, with Tatum running. So anyway, yeah, so, so a square and an attempt, attempted bunt. Let's watch Tatum get out of the box quick, move down the line. Nice play by Bittison, but said no, no chance. But yeah, no, he, he's, going for, he's going for a hit. And then he says, okay, well, if, if I don't get that bunt down, I'm just going to go big fly to dead center field. And it was, it was like a mirror image of what we saw last night. Is it hard to change your mindset from one pitch thinking bunt to next pitch, a total change in what you're, you're trying to do at the plate? 
No, but it's a great question. The whole key to bunting is the absolute commitment to the bunt. So the mental commitment, that pitch, it's over right after that, but it, you have to have a full commitment to that pitch. And that's oftentimes where people foul it off because they're kind of in between. Should I, shouldn't I? That is bunted, foul. So there was some indecision. What do you think? We hear Elliot Avent yelling, great idea. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm not going to say Menchik was, was in between there. But so often, especially guys that, you know, are mashers or, or even, even guys that do bunt for hit, you just, you have to have that complete commitment because you're kind of looking and you're, if you're in between at all is oftentimes where you go wrong because you're not, you're not slowing it down. You're not bunting first and then running. And then you're, you know, you're speeding it up because you're like, oh, I guess I should. So that's, that's what it comes down to, so. Yeah, it was a really nice idea there by Menchik and he almost put it down beautifully against her. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes, especially at the next level, you would you, more often in a nine to one game, a double header, you're not gonna be bunting. Um, but at the college level where every Almost game got is, Tatum. He got back safely. Yeah, where, where every game is so critically important, and we've seen so many big come-from-behind wins, there's no lead that is completely safe. So you always want to put the pressure on, really, until, until the game's over. Um, so you, you're going to run, you're going to bunt, you're going to hit, you're going to be aggressive straight on through. This has popped up on the infield. Bittison with a vocal call for it. The second out. Vocal call might be redundant as Devontae Brown will bat now with one aboard here and two away in the fourth. I liked it. Appreciate it. It's a 9-1 Wolfpack lead after the home run from Butler. The bunt turned bomb. Brown's another guy who's been starting to get the bat going. Entering the yeah. weekend, he had been swinging it a whole lot better. 14 for his last 38. Three of the five home runs in that stretch. Four doubles, a dozen of the 17 RBIs. Here in this month, beginning with that Clemson series, coming into this weekend series against Virginia Tech. And Brown is a, a middle of the order guy. Found it last year in summer ball, came back and, and got off to a tremendous start um, during the, the COVID year that got canceled. But came back this year and you know, really, really just didn't didn't quite find it. So as he said, started to kind of come into his own. And that's the that's the problem with you know, last year, guys didn't get a lot of at-bats. So it, it's almost like having a, a, a full year off. So where he was locked in and, and he was feeling really good, just came back and, and now starting to kind of get a lot more comfortable. And this is, this is a bat who's Devontae Brown hitting eighth in his NC State lineup that could very easily be uh, middle of the order, four or five guys. So, I mean, you got some, you got some juice and some thunder the bottom of this lineup with with Brown hitting eight. Coaching staff told us he is the strongest guy on the team. He's got plus power to all fields. As Herney makes it a two ball, two strike count, he's trying to escape the fourth. Home run, line out to right, infield single, pop to second. And now can Herney limit the damage to one run here in the fourth. His 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Good breaking ball, and he punches out Devontae Brown. Really nice looking slider there from Herney. But Johnny Butler led off this fourth inning with a solo shot. Worked the count full and smoked one to seven. ACC Women's Lacrosse Championship begins Wednesday with a quarterfinal quadruple header that begins at noon Eastern. And ACC Network and the ESPN app, your home for all seven games of the tournament over in Chapel Hill. 
Semifinals will be Friday afternoon, and then the championship game one week from today on Sunday at noon Eastern. Hey, there's Wes Moore. What a season his squad had, the women's basketball program here. The pack were absolutely loaded and a wonderful season with Wes Moore at the helm. Fun year across the ACC with Louisville and NC State being so strong. Just talked about women's lacrosse as well. I mean, that is a conference in the ACC that just dominates the national landscape. You've got North Carolina ranked first in the country. You got a bunch of top five teams behind them as well. It should be a really good women's lacrosse tournament. Tanner Thomas leading off here for Virginia Tech. Six, seven, eight for the Hokies with just one run to show for it so far against Reed Johnston, who's retired 10 in a row as Austin Murr makes the backhand play. Man, just can't, can't say enough about Reed Johnston and just pumping strikes, working that slider, locating his heater. He's got his change up. He's just on the mound, ready to go. And that's, that's the whole thing. This NC State pitching staff, they're just on the mound. They're, they're, they're taught and trained, get on and pitch. No thinking, just get up there and, and let's go. Get ahead, pitch to contact. Quickly, nothing in two. Right on cue to Nick Bittison. We told you Johnston in his four starts before today has given NC State good length. In those four starts, he's averaged 114 pitches. Average. Average. So that means there's definitely some that are in the 120s. Last Friday at Notre Dame, Reed Johnston went seven and a third. Struck out a career high 10. Three runs allowed. His best outing of the year was in Chapel Hill. Complete game, two runs, 116 pitches. He hadn't been entirely stretched out before that, had only thrown as many as 80 pitches because remember, he had a little bit of a late and delayed start to the season, but he punches out Bittison on a beautiful slider. Four Ks in the last three are on the breaking ball. Yeah, starting starting away, two strikes, look at that. I mean, you can't do it any better than that. You, you have to, if you're Bittison, you, you have to swing with two strikes, very defensive, and more than likely would have been called a strike anyway, but just completely unhittable right there. 6 of the last 7 batters he has started out with strike 1 the swinging variety to Cade Swisher the DH for the Hokies for Johnston I mean this is a veteran guy you talked about all the roles that he's been in it's his 32nd career start today in an NC State uniform and he's got a career 377 ERA coming into today's outing in 200 plus innings and you look up and it's 0-2 I mean, outside that second inning where there was just a little missing of the zone, Reed Johnson has been in complete command. He said he had a late start to the year in terms of being in the starting rotation. Elliot Avent said to us he had a little bit of a setback health-wise over Christmas, so they brought him along slowly in the preseason. Misses upstairs. He would have been in the starting rotation if not for that from the get-go. But making his fifth start of the year after four relief outings where he went somewhere in the realm of three, four innings each of those times out of the pen. 2-2. Two -two. And a full count on Swisher. Oh, yeah, there's no one else in the bullpen that was getting those innings, so... <laughs> I, I just still can't believe that five... Only five pitchers on this staff with more than 10 innings. Swisher in the air to right. Jarrett was in the shift, so he'll make the play in right field and he'll tell Devontae Brown about it. 
It's a 14 pitch, one, two, three inning for Reed Johnston. 12 in a row set down by the right hander. A look at the standings in the ACC coming into today. Louisville, of course, idle, unfortunately, with the Pitt series canceled for them, but they're still sitting atop the Atlantic and atop the conference. Notre Dame, told you they won the series with the doubleheader sweep of Boston College yesterday. And there's Virginia Tech leading the Coastal. Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just anxious to see what's going to happen. I mean, there's just beating up, teams beating up each other, and no one's clearly running away with anything. Everyone's seemingly in the hunt. So it's going to be a, a fun, fun stretch of baseball leading into the ACC tournament. We are at Doak Field at Dale Park. Adam Greenberg, Mike Monaco, bringing you this one from our homes. Our excellent crew behind the scenes down in Raleigh. First game of a doubleheader. Jonah Herney back out to work. And he starts with a breaking ball for ball one to the number nine hitter, JT Jarrett. He's had a couple of productive ABs so far. Walked and scored, leading off the second. And then dropped down a sack bunt in the third. Herney's done uh, a solid job outside of the inherited runner that got him off the bat of McDonough in the third and then the leadoff home run, but he's had some really nice moments here over these last few innings. Yeah, he certainly has, and you know, as we said when he first came in, his, his job is to give innings to Virginia Tech and you know, just kind of save, save that bullpen as best as they can for game two. And once again, not not saying this game is over by any stretch, but keeping keeping the game in reach and get it, getting innings. There's a strike to Jarrett. Ernie's got his sign from Dane Leonard. The payoff. Foul ground. Kevin Madden. Nice play. And wait, good job by Herney coming all the way back from 3-0. Do not want to give any free passes. So good job fighting back from 3-0. Back to the top now for Austin Murr. An affable chap. He's got a smile on his face. We enjoyed chatting with him <laughs> earlier this week. Uh, he's a he's a big ACC baseball fan. He was telling us that he's been watching a lot of games throughout the year over on ACC Network. Yep. Not included was his ranking of favorite color analysts. <laughs> but he did say play-by-play -play was number one in Mikey Monaco, right? Yeah, he was raving about uh, Mark Neely and Mike Morgan and Anish Shroff and Chris Cotter. He's behind nothing in two. A native of, as he told me, Stillwater, Minnesota. A little bit more so than Denmark Township. In Minnesota, right by the Wisconsin border. Leads the team in slugging. Came in with the OPS above 1,000 out of the leadoff spot. Oh, boy, that just missed from Herney. Yeah, it certainly did. But we've had we've had a tight zone all day. There haven't been too many pitches. That Adam Dowdy has given in favor. And see, here's the, here's the warning to Coach Chef. Can't argue balls and strikes, so. You would say putting pen to paper, but a Sharpie for Adam Dowdy. 
I mean, the only thing you can say is it, 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 it's been consistent. Um, now, obviously, Coach Chef not liking it, but at the same time, as long as it's been consistently tight, not a whole, not a whole lot to argue, except a little bit of frustration. Obviously, being down nine-one and, and losing Friday's game. Murr goes the opposite way with two strikes. That's the second time in his last two trips that with two strikes on him, he's had a simple opposite field swing for a backside single. No, that was awesome. Left on left right there, stays on this. You see his head completely still. Head stays on the ball, and he's, I mean, that's nothing you could do. I mean, not good pitch by Herney, but even better job hitting by Murr. All smiles for the fourth year junior. Started his career in the junior college ranks. And since he showed up here in Raleigh, he's done absolutely nothing but hit. In the 45 games he's played for the pack coming into today, a 328 average, more walks than strikeouts, and a sky high OPS as well. Yeah, a first baseman leading off. Also a, a rarity. 2-0 to Tyler McDonough. Try not as their first baseman I know who who have led off. It's not as rare as a catcher, but yeah, I, not not too many of them. Uh, if you're watching at home and you've got a good idea of a catcher who was a good leadoff hitter or a first baseman who was, please chime in on social media. We would love to hear the input. I'm well, trying Jason, to think. Jason Kendall. Ah, that's a good one. High OBP guy. I'm thinking now the first baseman, though. I don't know. You can tweet at us at Adam Greenberg 10. Is that you on Twitter? Do you even know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a professional retweeter of Mike Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> Opposite way to right, cross comes on. Two down. Or at Mike Monaco underscore at ACC Network. We will find it one way or another. But, yeah, Kendall's a great pick. I mean, that's a, a multi-time all-star behind the plate. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of catchers, here's Luca Tresh. He's drawn a lot of draft praise and intrigue in recent weeks. Baseball America was very high in its ranking of Tresh, as others have been. They updated their draft class and how it looks, and they've got Luca in the top 25. Summer's draft. All right, I did a Google. Joe Maurer played first base mm -hmm. for the Twins and let off a game. And a catcher. These are the draft rankings from Kylie McDaniel, our expert ESPN baseball insider. He's got Luca at 45. And a really good crop of guys coming out of the ACC and where they slot into Kylie's top 100. Yeah, and there's no concern whether Luca Tresh can hit. <laughs> the, the, the concern, if there was a concern, was what is he behind the dish? And behind Pat Bailey really didn't get too many opportunities and starting to kind of solidify himself. I mean, second to none with work ethic. I mean, this kid is keeps his body in, in check and works his tail off to make sure that he can catch every day and, and he can hit. I mean, in, in the fall. So time clock warning right there. So anyway, Luca Tresh had just one incredible fall where, where everyone was kind of laughing and joking about everything he hit off of. It's over 100 miles an hour. 
Madden, nice pick and a rocket of an arm that he's got to retire the fall masher, Luca Tresh. Inning over, we're through five. Our scoreboard around the ACC. We told you that Florida State and Georgia Tech had to finish up the last couple of innings of yesterday's middle game of the weekend series. Florida State held on and won, and they are out to a lead on the flats in Atlanta in game three, and Florida State is thinking sweep. North Carolina's thinking the same. Miami trying to salvage the finale and leading 4-1 in the sixth inning. Yeah, that's a tough weekend for Georgia Tech, who has really been scuffling, trying to refine their luster from February and March, where they were one of the uh, one of the best teams in the country, ranked inside the top ten, and just really scuffling with the bat. And they're consistently with the pitching staff. And so Florida State taking full ad full advantage right now. Reed Johnston going to work against 9-1 and 2, starting with Dane Leonard. Yeah, Florida State has a chance if they are to hang on in that finale. The Knowles could get to 15 and 11 in the Atlantic. NC State is behind Florida State. Both NC State and Clemson start the day with double headers for both today. They start today at 10 and 12. <laughs> Hear the uh, chirps about delay a game. See some tensions and frustrations. Certainly on the Virginia Tech side. Almost a nice catch made in the seats. Let's let's get back for a second to Reed, Reed Johnston. Surprise, surprise, we got an 0-2 count. I mean, he is just a machine. And just 78 pitches. Reed's first two innings, he threw 37 pitches. But then his last three coming into the sixth, 38. He has really become more efficient after laboring, particularly in the second, through 20 plus in that second frame. One, two to Leonard. And caught by Torres. Uh, did you see the guy in the stands after he, he missed the, the catch? He was still talking about it a bit. <laughs> Trying to talk through the, uh, the near web gem. <laughs> I think he had some ground to cover too. It looked like he was Dodging the railing, maybe in the alley. Yeah, it's not easy. The aisle. You got you to you get to the railing, find it quickly. <laughs> it's like a center fielder. You got to feel for the wall. Well, yeah. I mean, you you, you can't you can't passively just kind of glide to it. You got to find it. <laughs> I mean, if you're in the ballpark, you're going to get critiqued. I mean, you just you, you have to be there to learn. So this is a college ranks. You got to learn from your mistakes. <laughs> How about, how about the guy we had a few weeks ago? We were getting ready on a Sunday, much like today, two weeks ago to the day, as Jack Hurley bats for the third time, the leadoff man. We're getting ready to call Virginia at Clemson, and our cameras spotted a, a Clemson fan who was reading a book that was labeled and titled Baseball. I mean, he was studying up so that he wouldn't get criticized by you. In game. Uh, it, 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 it's constructive criticism. It's, it's not. It's not being criticized. It's constructive. Big cut. Two and two on Hurley. This is the near play. Oh, so kind of float. Because you're kind of floating back. You, you, you gotta, I mean, that was almost brilliant. It was. But if he took a step up, give himself more of a chance. I, I don't think you can score that in error. That is more than ordinary effort. I'm not giving him an error. So when you're going back to the wall, I mean, you, you just you just kind of glide. He was kind of gliding. <laughs> but anyway, Hurley is a guy who's just so much talent, fast twitch guy, just really needs to cut down on the strikeouts and get a little bit more plate discipline, and he's going to have himself a heck of a career. 
Can't touch Johnston, who has his fifth strikeout, and no one has reached against Reed Johnston since the first two and the second got on. The slider just top of the zone. Those are those are the, some of the toughest pitches to hit. That that slider that stays up but breaks enough, or up in the zone breaks enough. 14 in a row, retired by Johnston. And it's quickly nothing and two on Tanner Schobel, who struck out and then flew out the center to end the third. Johnson's looking for a fourth straight one, two, three inning. Yank the fastball. And Virginia Tech's just looking for a base runner. Break it up. One, two. Backup slider misses to Schobel. He's had a really nice freshman season, much like Jack Hurley. Tanner from Williamsburg, Virginia in the Hampton Roads area. 2-2. Two -two. Bouncer left side. Men sheep. 1-2-3 again. 15 in a row for Reed Johnston having himself a day. Well, we told you that at the outset of the weekend, NC State, according to D1 Baseball, among the first five out eight ACC teams projected to head to regionals if the postseason in their eyes were starting today. And the resume for NC State, I mean, they're in a spot where, hey, if they win a series here at home against the top 25 opponent, you look at the road ahead for Elliott Avent's bunch, I mean, they can certainly climb back into that picture, and, and who knows how high they could climb. Yeah, there, there's there's no doubt. I mean, with the with, – I'll say it again. With the pitching, the defense, and the bats that they have, this was, this was a team in the top 15 to start the year. So they – got healthy they played tremendous defense and if they keep winning they just weren't getting the, the the w's early on if they keep winning there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to make the tournament but they, they have to continue to they have to continue to win series jonah herney's day is done he fared quite well and now the 15th appearance for the luscious locks of the left-hander noah johnson And ball one to start out after Herney went two and a third. One run ball, four hits, no walks, and a punch out. And another lefty follows, third pitcher of the day. That's hit hard, but into the shift. Bittison not in time to get Johnny Butler, who's aboard for the third time with his third knock. And Butler can... Certainly run exceptionally well. Guy in the cleanup hole. See, gets out of the box quickly. And Bittison playing shallow right field. That's the, that's the other issue with the, the shift is, I mean, if you can, if you can run, you got a chance. And Bittison did everything he could, charged hard, but. See the frustration from Bittison. Leadoff man on again. NC State has scored in all but one inning. Didn't punch a run across in the fifth. And Jose Torres had an RBI ground out in the first and an RBI single in the second. Hit the ball hard to right field last at bat. Thank you, Bunt. Johnson, by the way, has a fastball 88 to 92. And he's really increased the velo on his slider this year. It was in the 70s, kind of in the low 70s last year. He's got in the low 80s this year. And as you might expect with his frame, he's a tough A-B for left-handed hitters. You see that ball kind of jumps out of his hand. He's got a high spin rate on his fastball and on his slider. He's 
Got the curly locks working. He's got the stash going. And a two-strike count on Torres. And a swing and a miss. And you can see the life on a fastball. And when you hear high spin rate, when you elevate a fastball, you're going to get a lot of swing and miss with it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you locate it right there and get a swing. I mean, there's just no chance to do anything. That ball is just exploding as it gets, gets closer to that mitt. It just takes off. Well, we're going to get a pinch hitter here in the DH spot where Terrell Tatum was two for three with a two-run single in the first and then an infield single his last time. This is D'Angelo Giles. Powerful right-handed option. And he rips the first pitch and dumps it into left for a knock. Two of the first three have reached off Johnson. And that's exactly the approach when you come in to pinch hit. Aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Get that bat off your shoulders early in the count. Get your first fastball. And do exactly what Giles just did right there. So Tatum came out more than likely because of the matchup, the lefty lefty matchup and Johnson. Just want to make sure that nothing was wrong with, uh, with his hand and wrist. A nice and moment for Giles, who got his first hit of the season there. Had been 0 for 6. And he'll get run for here. Ryan Fecto comes out to chat with Noah Johnson. And after two of the first three were lefties, three righties set to come here in the bottom third of the NC State lineup. So Johnson's afternoon is short-lived. And Peter Sacalaris is coming on for Virginia Tech. 9-1 game in the sixth inning. The Huddle Crew. This might be the next generation of them right there. They're back tonight with their spring review show. Kelsey Riggs will host. She's got the coach, Eric McLean, and QB1 EJ Manuel with her. One hour special starting at 7 Eastern on ACCN and the ESPN app. The youngsters here at the Doak. Sixth inning, game one of a doubleheader, and NC State in total control. Couple of hits off Noah Johnson, and so Virginia Tech turns to the right-hander, Peter Sacalaris. Yeah, nice opportunity for Peter to come in, only six and a third innings so far. See a little inflated ERA, but with not many innings, that can go both ways quickly, go up or down. So come in a couple, couple scoreless frames right here. Drive that down, but certainly a uh, no easy task. Two guys on and just one out against an NC State team that is seeing the ball exceptionally well and putting some really good swings and finding a lot of barrels, especially with guys in scoring position. Five for nine. Voita Manchik pulled back as the sidewinding Sacalaris missed with ball one. That's Johnny Butler at second. Carson Falskin is the pinch runner over at first for D'Angelo Giles. You see Menchik go for three, lined out to right his first time. That was the hardest hit ball he's had today in three trips. Sacalaris, a second year freshman out of the lovely town of Milton, Massachusetts and the pride of Milton Academy. Let's get that. A little three quarters sinker ball, so a lot of a lot of ground balls, and certainly would love love to see one right here for a double play. Get out of this inning. It's not sidearm, and it's not true dirt scraping submarine. Yeah, it's kind of. Little three quarters. <laughs> Maybe like negative. Oh, that 
That was that was more submarine. That was a different. Well, what that is is a strikeout, out number two. I mean, that's nasty. He went, <clears throat> he went down on that one. But that that's kind of the release point. We got to see that pitch in the pitch before, frame by frame. <laughs> Get the Edgar Tronic cameras. Unless I'm missing something, it, it did look different. Getting a lot of, a lot of warnings. That's the third one. When is Here's Devontae turns? Brown. It's been that kind of day. That's a little higher. Release point. Either way, it's it's. I don't it's think funk. an enjoyable it's, experience. Yeah. It's no right, right on right. First time you face a guy like this, and and you're really looking, you're looking for release points. So if you don't have a consistent release point, it makes it a little bit more challenging. High bouncer Madden got rid of it quickly. Knocked down over at first. They back pick to second, and Butler bolts to the plate, and he scores. So Virginia Tech got greedy with a throw down to second, and Johnny Butler heads up, adds to the NC State lead. What a baseball play. You see, high chop, really tough play for Madden with Brown running so well. Rumfield gives himself I mean, I mean, that's just that's just heads up right there by Butler. As soon as that ball was thrown, he's he's off. And that's as you said, that's kind of the way that it's gone for NC State today. High chopper, infield single turns into a run. Boy, and if anyone knows Elliot Avent, his heart is probably swelling at the thought of that play, that read, that sort of instinct from Johnny Butler. Yeah, it's win it's winning baseball. Doesn't matter what the score is, it's winning baseball, taking advantage of the situation and JT Jarrett lifts one to center and right at Hurley to end the inning. The pack adds on, it is 10-1 through six. Heck of a day for Reed Johnston. Six innings of one hit ball for the veteran right hander. I mean, he was nothing short of dominant. Six innings, one hit, one run. I mean, it's the, the one walk, though. He was 0-2, 1-2, with the exception of that second inning where he just lost it just for a little bit. I mean, he walked Mark Madden, um, just really wasn't in complete command. But everything else, he had all his pitches, his two-seamer. You see the breaking ball. And he was just throwing strikes. Uh, pinpoint location. He was tremendous. Well, he'll give way now to Chris Villeman, typically the midweek starter, but NC State this week did not have a midweek game. They did scrimmage on Tuesday of this week, but Villeman, a left-hander, can run it up to 94. Yeah, he's he's been really good and an opportunity here and. First pitch is rolled foul off the bat of Gavin Cross. And once again, we've, we've touched on it, but the, the top of the order really hasn't been able to do anything against NC State, and, and you got the league le leading hitter in Gavin Cross coming up yet again with nobody on base. So and Cross has made good contact. He just hasn't had anything to show for it yet. Yeah, the, I mean, the first inning, he just missed the home run. I mean, I thought that ball was going to leave the yard. And next at bat, he had the ball right on the screws to Jarrett and shallow right field. So it, it, it has not been his approach or, or anything short of just he hasn't gotten hits. Goes the opposite way here, back toward the wall, and off the wall from Cross. He's got a wall ball double to lead off the seventh. The leader in hits with the average at 400 coming into the ball game. Yeah, and that's another ball hit on the screws. 
Stays on. You just see just the way he stays on the ball right there. Head doesn't move. Body's not going anywhere. I mean, just missed the home run. I mean, top of the wall. He can't hit it. Can't hit it any better. Can't hit it any harder. And Gavin Cross is just uh, certainly impressed. He is ultra impressive. He can chew his batting gloves and get them off as well. Second year freshman from Bristol, Tennessee, right by the Virginia border. John Sheff said to us, one of the better hitters in the country and one of the best left-handed hitters, John Sheff said, that he's ever been around in his time as a head coach and an assistant coach as well. TJ Rumfield drops one into left in front of Butler. Cross advances, and Virginia Tech's got him at the corners with nobody out in the seventh. Yeah, tough, tough luck right there for Villanen. But TJ Rumfield gets it, and you see Cross, really good job watching everything, he, giving yourself an opportunity to get to third base. He's a really good base runner and runs pretty well, even though the offensive numbers might make you think otherwise. He's a guy that his goal is to play center field for Virginia Tech at some point. All right, so here's Kevin Madden, and he goes first pitch, swinging into right field to score cross. Three straight hits to begin the seventh and greet Chris Villeman. Little life for this Virginia Tech team, I'm sure. Ecstatic to see Reed Johnston out. Stays on top of that ball. Yeah, all, all, three, all three hits so far off Villeman the other way. Cross goes opposite field. Rumfield didn't hit it all that well, but still went opposite field, and there's Madden going the other way. Villeman pitched out of the bullpen Sunday at Notre Dame as well, and he scuffled in that finale. Only got four outs and gave up six runs, all of them earned on four hits. And he's getting a visit from the pitching coach, Clint Chrysler. With nobody out here in the seventh inning. Crazier things have happened in the Atlantic Coast Conference this year. We talked about Boston College earlier. Their Auburn comeback early on in the season drew plenty of national attention with what they did coming back from eight runs down. They've done that twice this year. And then Notre Dame was down 9 nothing yesterday, sent 17 to the plate in one inning in the eighth inning. Here's Tanner Thomas. And that just misses for ball one. Here, Tress saying, you and me, you and me. Bouncer right side, and that gets through as well. Rumfield will stop at third, and they've got Kevin Madden hung up between second and third, and that is a costly out. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one right there, but you, you got to run with your head up. So you see the ball the ball gets through and Madden expecting Rumfield to uh, to be waved around but you can't really expect anything to happen you got to you got to run with your head up right there you see a little little frustration from Madden So four straight hits, but the first out, and a breaking ball for strike one to Nick Bittison. Bittison stings one to center. McDonough dives. Did he hang on to it? Rumfield comes to the plate and scores to make it 10-3. Edison doesn't know what the answer is either. And neither does Tanner Thomas. Some, I'm some, somebody's got to make a call. 
that's that's a that's really tough luck if you're Bittison because he he dropped that ball. So you see, I mean, it appeared, he dropped it. I mean, the ball comes right out, so it's not it's not a catch. Yep. And Tanner Thomas is still standing over at first base, so he could be a force out. Obviously, it's second. Yeah. I mean, it, it, this is tough because there was no real call. And Tanner Thomas, as you mentioned, he goes back to first base. So one way or another, they're, they can't just grant him the base. I mean, McDonough only needed to throw it to second base for the force out. Well, I, I suppose if they had called it a catch, and so watch the second base umpire, David Brown. It's tough to That's tell. Out of, it's out of the frame. Yeah, well, comes so, out. but I mean, if they're calling it a catch, and if it were to go to review, then there's a scenario in which perhaps Virginia Tech could still have first and second. I don't think so. I, I, how, how can you, you can't just give him the base. I mean, because the ball's cut off, so where Tanner Thomas goes back to first, you can't just, I mean, the ball's thrown to the cutoff man. All he has to do is throw it to second base, and he's still out. So the, I mean, honestly, from, from a hitter's perspective, the only thing that matters, or if you're Bittison, is you're either uh, a ground ball force out or a sack fly. So one is against your average, one is not. So, but frustrating nonetheless because that play needed to be called dramatically, um, catch or no catch because Tanner Thomas is the one that really needed to make that decision of what he was going to do. Well, you can obviously sense the frustration of Virginia Tech throughout the day. And after Kevin Madden got hung up between second and third for the first out, very well might be two down for Virginia Tech with a couple of outs on the base paths. And Tyler McDonough nearly made the diving catch. It was tough to tell. Yeah, but I, I just don't see what what you're going to what you're going to call. No, I get what you're saying. Umpires having a look at it right now. So uh, obviously there was no catch made, so you you can't call Bittison out. Here we Let's go. Let's see. So it it looks like they're giving Thomas second and Bittison Whoa. first. Whoa. I'd love to hear the ruling. I, I just, I, I don't know how you, um, unless there was just no call made. So if, if, he, if he called him out, the umpire called him out originally, then you'd have to give them the base because you've, you've given them the reason. The, the Tanner Thomas would have then had to go back because you called him out. But if, if he didn't call him out, then I don't know. So we, but, but, we, but here's, we couldn't But here's see. my point. If the call was out yeah. and the runner came back toward the base because the call was that he was out. Correct. Again, we could not see the signal made from the second base umpire. But if yep. the call was out and then they overturn it, how can you say he's forced out when that did not occur? No, I'm, I'm agreeing. If he called him out originally, then you have to give him the base. Because you've Which then I, made I a decision. Is, I think is yeah. then through uh, some context clues as we broadcast from home and could not see what the second base umpire ruled there. Yeah. I, I think that's probably what they are discussing and, and talking through the order on this. Yeah, but then now you have bases loaded because Rumfield goes back because there's no assumption right, of anything. that's the other part of this. Rumfield was there's, on third base. Yeah, there's no assumption of anything that happened. So... Well, essentially what they're going to do is award first, it's going to be bases loaded, Bittison's going to get a base hit. And How about this, though? I mean, Rumfield is going to score either way on a tag up because diving play, catch made, or if it drops in for a hit. I mean, he, he did score, right? I'm saying, I'm saying Tanner Thomas, the runner at first, never could go to second and complete that action. Whereas regardless, and either way, whether it was a catch or not a catch, Rumfield did score legally. But it's a, but once again, that's an assumption that he, if he makes the catch, he tags and he's safe. But, so but I, I, which I'm, I believe he did, right? 
So I'm saying no, either he way, didn't, he's he never good. tagged. Well, uh, yeah, I but think, the, I think he waited to, until the catch was made. No, until he thought the catch was made. You're right, but what I, what I think what we're both saying is, no matter what, there's no. I think there's no assumptions being made. You know what I would love, Adam, to be there and hear the conversations. <laughs> not even that. I would just love one umpire to be mic'd up. And this, yeah. this is not specific to the college game. This is something that has been a, a, a murmur at the big league level as well. You know, you, you've got it in football. You've, you've got it in men's lacrosse, just to, to think of another sport. Elliot Avent right now is not pleased with whatever he has been told. This whole sequence, again, it was first and third for Virginia Tech. One out in the inning. Tyler McDonough, you see the center fielder, tried to make a diving catch, did not make the catch. We're not certain what the initial ruling was on the catch or no catch, if there was a demonstrative ruling, but it's clear he did not make the catch. Rumfield out of your picture comes in to score. Based on when he came in, I think he did tag either way. Whether the catch was you know, he thought made or not. They're going to give Tanner Thomas second. They're going to give Nick Bittison first because it was not a catch. So no out on the play. First and second for Virginia Tech and the run scored. And Rumfield scores. Okay. There we go. Whew. Ball one. After all of that from Chris Villeman, who tried to stay sharp by throwing a bit with Luca Trash behind the plate. I'll say this. I... I think they got that right as best you can in that situation. Agreed. I mean, cut he, from Cade Swisher. Yeah, he dropped the ball. So, for all intents and purposes, should be a base hit. It's a very tough read, no matter what, if you're Tanner Thomas. But you would be more than kind of like that halfway point. So as soon as you see that ball or the the sign, he didn't make the catch. You're bolting towards second base. And Bittison was even confused himself. And, you know, we were a bit too waiting to, I mean, I think you saw the ball pop out from McDonough a little quicker than I did, but you're waiting on a signal too to know for sure. And, and Tanner Thomas is a fifth year senior, very veteran guy. Two and two, the count on Swisher. Well, in any event, if you're Swisher, you're trying to take full advantage of this opportunity that, that Virginia Tech now has. They're not out of this game. You've got some, some life, some energy. And now a full count. Villeman in a bind in the seventh, a 3-2. Hit hard toward well, left well center. Struck. Tailing away from McDonough, and that'll get to the wall. Thomas coming around third, throw to the plate, and they got him. Boy, he must not have gotten a great read there off a second. Nick Pittison was waiting on him at third, and no run scores for Virginia Tech. And with, with one out, without even seeing it, with one out, you have to be, you're not tagging, no matter what. I mean, you're, yeah, he's, he's back to tag. Wow. That is a, a huge break for NC State. And if you're Virginia Tech, kind of shaking your head on, on that read right there. They'll come to get Villeman with some action in the pen for NC State. Six hits in the inning from six batters, yet we've got two outs and a new pitcher coming in for NC State after this.
This is Tanner Thomas who was trying to tag up. That ball kept carrying through the wind, and then the relay to the plate cuts him down for the second out of the seventh inning. Yeah, and, and, and right here, if if you're Thomas, there's there's one out, and ball's in front of you, so you can see what's happening. You never are back to the bag to tag. You always have to be close to halfway, if not, you know, halfway, because worst case, you can always get back to the bag if you see a play is about to be made, but it's because he was starting from second base, I mean, that's kind of why he was he was gunned down right there, and definitely a, a, a big break for NC State, like like we said before break, and, and really, really tough. They get a break with the play before, and Kate Swisher comes through and drives that ball into the end of the gap and, and got him down at home. So tough, tough for Virginia Tech right there. Dalton Feeney comes on, redshirt junior right-hander after, yeah, you're right, nice throw from the guy you saw at shortstop, Jose Torres, who had such a nice transfer on the relay, skipped into that throw and delivered a strike to Luca Tresh. Yeah, threw a bullet, I mean, I mean, perfect, perfect defense. And that's what NC State has been doing all year. Touched on it, 985 fielding percentage, but headsy base running, good defense, good relays. I mean, this is a, obviously a well-coached team, and that, that's winning baseball. Take advantage of all opportunities. And again, no run scored there, so it's 10-3 here in the seventh. And a strikeout as Dane Leonard goes down swinging and Dalton Feeney makes quick work and strands two in scoring position. So after six straight hits, a strikeout ends the seventh. But 8 Eastern will have the best of the ACC Women's Golf Championship that was played in Greensboro last week. You can watch the one hour recap right here on ACCN or the ESPN app. Duke took home its 22nd overall ACC women's golf title. They were probably dancing about it as well. They're first in the new match play format with Gina Kim, the ACC individual champion. Well, it's stretch time here at Doak Field at Dale Park. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Game one of two in the doubleheader. Can understand a little bit of a yawn here. Got a lot of baseball to go. Oh, nice catch. <laughs> New pitcher comes on here for the Hokies as Christian Worley, the right-hander. Freshman comes on for his fourth appearance. Fifth pitcher of the day for Virginia Tech. Game that was started by Anthony Simonelli. Two and two thirds innings and the seven runs. And first pitch swinging from Austin Murr. Fifth time through the NC State lineup. And Murr has singled the opposite way each of his last two trips. Good breaking ball. Fouls that one off the catcher. Nice location, nice, nice life to that heater from Worley. Staying away from Murr, even though he's done some good things the opposite field, last couple at bats. Pulled a laser home run on down the right field on Friday. And lays off the breaking ball in the dirt. Austin was telling us this week that he's had a few different issues that have cropped up this year health-wise. He lives with Johnny Butler, who unfortunately had tested positive for COVID earlier this year. And so Austin was a part of the quarantine process. As he said, he was locked up for a week. Goes the opposite way here, and a nice running catch is made in left by Jonas Seegers, who has come on in the outfield for Thomas. Had a wrist issue as well.
banged up when he was caught sliding or, or deciding not to and eventually did slide weekend against Georgia Tech and jammed it. But Austin Murr is all healthy and playing well atop the lineup for State. Yeah, when Butler and Murr were both out, I mean, those were huge holes. And getting them back in this lineup certainly helped everything click. As Coach Avent said, nice to have the gang back again, and the gang has certainly been consistent in this lineup. The pitching staff, and they're throwing out this same uh, same guys day in and day out. It might be as good a top two in the lineup as anyone's in the ACC with Austin Murr at the top and this guy, the switch hitting Tyler McDonough, that in second. You can certainly argue that. Tyler's had a great day. A double, a single, a double, and then a fly out to right. Two balls and a strike on the native of Liberty Township, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. He went to Moeller in Cincy. Very well-known and highly regarded program. Went to high school with Miles McBride, Deuce McBride, the West Virginia basketball star. It's a program that has served NC State quite well through the years. Gave him Andrew Brackman, first rounder of the Yankees in 07. And Eric Surkamp, three-year starting pitcher for the Pack. Tyler, a preseason third-team All-American, according to D1 Baseball. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three calls. Really nice-looking pitch there from the right-hander, Christian Worley. You know, some paint. So far, Worley's looking really, really sharp. See this heater right on the black. Come on, done a nice job so far against Murray McDonough. Two out, no one on for Luca Tresh. Number three hole hitter and the catcher has walked twice. Then flew out the center and grounded out to third to end the third and fifth innings respectively. And Worley's looking for a quick inning. John Sheff and Ryan Fecto would love that headed into the series finale in the back half of the double dip. And there's always always silver linings in in any game, but we'll see if Worley uh, Worley can get through this tough tough top of the top of the order. Be a nice little silver lining. Add an arm. One two. Trash didn't chase. Ten three the score. NC State scored three in the first, three in the second. Two more in the third. Lone runs in the fourth and the sixth as well. And Trash stings one to left. Seegers comes on and makes a sliding catch. Really nice work from Christian Worley. Luca Tresh had one taken away and Virginia Tech pitching with its first one, two, three inning of the day on a nice catch from Seegers. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified this week, April 18th through today, as ACC Unity Week. Another wonderful cause with another Spring Unity Week. So many great initiatives we have seen in the last year or so across the Atlantic Coast Conference. NC State. Everyone wearing 26, honoring the late Chris Combs.
battled so valiantly, persevered in such a distinguished way against ALS, a truly wretched, wretched disease. And the cutout of Chris Combs, former All-ACC standout behind home plate. Well, we go to the eighth inning here at the Doak. Adam Greenberg, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you. Game one of the doubleheader. A reminder, you can watch game two over on ACC Network. A scheduled start time, somewhat tentative, depending on when this goes final. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Hope you'll join us. This is the leadoff spot in the Virginia Tech lineup after they got two runs in the seventh. And Jonah Seegers batting for the first time in place of the center fielder, Jack Hurley. Seegers, a, a third-year sophomore from Gainesville, Virginia. Made 14 starts this year. He was a starter at the outset of the season through the middle of March, but has only started one game since. And getting his first action today for the first time in two and a half weeks. But a very good athlete and a very patient hitter as well. He's got an OBP above 400. Yeah, he came in and made really nice play last inning on Tresh. That rides up and in out of the right arm of Dalton Feeney. Let's see what Virginia Tech can do here. They still got six outs to play with. Sent seven batters to the plate in the seventh inning. Six hits, but they ran into two outs. And that doesn't even mention the controversy we had on the ball hit to McDonough in center. Full count was, after the cap went flying from Feeney. It was a strange inning, to say the least. Six, six hits, only two runs. He said ran into it, two outs. That's hit hard, and foul down the line at third. Good eyes down there by Gregory Street. Let's see, just foul. 3-2 again. And Seegers, we told you he's patient. He works a leadoff walk to begin the eighth inning. A nice at bat. Seegers come in, had a nice little impact already, diving catch. Works himself a leadoff walk, which never leads to anything good. If you're NC State. Well, brings up the two spot in the lineup here. Tanner Schobel. And ball one. Tanner so far, 0 for 3. A strikeout, a fly out to center, and a ground out to third. Sounds like we got a, a Scooby nickname in there. John Chef said to us, Tanner's been very steady defensively. Remember, he's gone over to shortstop. And a quality hitter has been rock solid for him as a rookie. One and two. Virginia Tech's been able to get some knocks when they've had runners aboard in this game. Feeney's one, two. Slow roller, back to the mound. Feeney goes to second and gets the force on Seegers. Nice play by Feeney right there. Tough. Going to second base, but confident PFP. Something they practice quite often. You see him jump off the mound, immediately turns to second base and fires a, a bullet. JT Jarrett. <laughs> He's smiling. That was a seed. Yeah, from a three-quarter slot. 
brings up Gavin Cross. Should say Gavin Cross's spot in the lineup. They will hit for Cross here with Carson Jones, second year freshman. Came out as a pinch runner on Friday. And fouls it back. He's behind nothing and two. Ten for 45 this year. OPS a little over 600. A home run and seven driven in from the Richmond area. And Jones couldn't hold up. It's a strikeout for Feeney, and there's two away. Nasty slider. Jones come in off the bench. Brings up the cleanup spot now, where TJ Rumfield had been. And that is ball one to Lucas Donlin, with Schobel staying put over at first. Donlin, a, a second year freshman batting here. Yeah, nice stop back there. Yeah, really. I mean, that's, that's, that's what the concern was. Not concern, but just how good is Tresh. And you see him doing a heck of a job behind the dish, keeping the ball in front of him. Receiving there from Feeney with Donlin batting. Nine for 30 on the year. Started a couple of midweek games over the last few weeks. Good catch on the cap there from Feeney. It's already fallen off a few times. Mid-pitch catch. Gabby Sanchez and I saw that in a midweek game. <laughs> North Carolina, Coastal Carolina on Tuesday at the Bosch. Three one. Goes all the way to the backstop and it's ball four. We've seen some batting helmets that <laughs> Might not be the most snug fit in the ACC elsewhere this year. See a little bit Kyle of everything. Teal. Kyle Teal, right? Yep. I, ha I have not found out if they've gotten to the bottom of that yet. Well, I'm intrigued about Virginia's this. Virginia's in action right now on ESPN. I'm intrigued too. about this, uh, this hat with Feeney. I mean, it's come off three three or four times. Every Every pitch, it looks like it's... Falling off, he caught one mid-pitch. A solid fit there on strike one to Kevin Madden. One of the leaders on this team. He's been a three-year starter from the get-go in his time in Blacksburg. Been aboard twice as well in this one. Feeney's 1-1. One, one. You mentioned this earlier, looking for silver linings. We saw that from Worley pitching in the bottom of the seventh. If you're John Chef, you know you got nine more innings, another game coming. The last two innings offensively, you can bottle some of that up, right, going forward? Abs absolutely. I mean, baseball is a game of momentum. You start feeling feeling good, getting some hits, and then just get right into the next game. Big time breaking ball, though, from Feeney, the fan Madden. And two Ks in the inning for Dalton Feeney, who strands a pair in the eighth. Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's the start of the NFL Draft, where the college football stars will find out where they are headed to the National Football League. The Pack have one of the top defensive tackles available, Aleem McNeil. We'll see where he lands. Some folks have him as the third best defensive tackle available. 
Out to the home half of the eighth inning here at Doak Field at Dale Park. Game one of the doubleheader, game two of the series. Adam Greenberg, Mike Monaco, our entire crew with you. And NC State leading Virginia Tech after State won on Friday. And the Wolfpack trying to lock up a series before the finale will follow. They certainly are trying to lock up the series win, but getting through the end of this game and and looking for the sweep. Every win is so critically important, especially the way that NC State started for their regional opportunity. So when you can when you can get them, get them. Johnny Butler takes strike one. He's been tremendous today. Three for four, he's driven in three. Had the home run to center. Johnny Barrels with some terrific base running as well earlier. Worley bounces one, a ball and a strike. Uh, game that just went final. Miami with an 8-1 win over North Carolina. So Carolina wins the series but does not sweep the Canes at the Bosch. And North Carolina's playing some good baseball as well. They get now a mark of 14 and 13 in the ACC coming out of that weekend. D1 Baseball had them as a three seed in their regional projection earlier this week. Yeah, it's just, it's just been a grind. It's been a battle for the whole league all year. There, there really only appears to be a couple teams that are kind of out of contention. Let's see, Duke is getting close to out of contention. Wake and Boston College. And I'd say everyone else has a, has a shot. And that ball's crushed. Butler smacks this one to right. And Johnny Butler's got his second home run of the ball game. A mammoth blast and his fourth hit of the day. Another leadoff shot for Johnny Barrels. Johnny Barrels going big fly. Ball's up in the zone from Worley and short and compact and he knew it. As soon as that ball hit that barrel, it was out of here. What a day for Johnny Barrels. That thing was cooked into the trees in right. Coming into this game, Johnny Butler in 96 at bats had four home runs. And in the last three trips to the plate, he has homered twice. Well, how about he started off the game in first inning, bases loaded, struck out. That's how he started the game with a, in a double header. And then proceeded, base hit in the second, home run in the fourth, base hit in the sixth, home run in the eighth, and he's got a whole bunch of at bats left in this in this day. I mean, going into a double the second game of a doubleheader with four knocks feels pretty nice. Guy who spent his freshman year in the junior college ranks in Illinois. But now a third year starter here for the pack. This is his one hundred and fourth career start. Got off to a really nice beginning to his season last year before the shutdown. And man, what a year he has had. And you think about him and Murr and McDonough, and if Trash can get back to the guy he was at the outset of the season, if Torres can heat up a bit on the offensive side of things, man, there's some serious length. And all of a sudden, you'll start getting the NC State team that everyone was, you know, pegging as a, a top 15 team in the country at the outset of the year. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm seeing it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, top top to bottom, as you mentioned, this team can this team can mash. And they've got the defense touched on that. And their starting pitching is as good as anyone. So all the pieces to the puzzle certainly are there. So if as long as they keep getting those W's, 
They're they're gonna be there. Oh, uh, Worley will exit after he did really nice work in the seventh. We'll tell you about the pitching change when we come back to the doke with Nolan Wilson coming on. Home half of the eighth inning and a pitching change for Virginia Tech. Their sixth arm of the day is the right-hander Nolan Wilson comes on for Christian Worley here. Faced a couple of batters, but Johnny Butler homered and then Jose Torres worked the walk. And Nolan Wilson converted catcher with an above average spin rate, which one would imagine. Got to throw that ball to second base, get good carry, good life. And de decent depth with his curveball, getting an opportunity here. Only has two innings on the year. So opportunity for Nolan to uh, get some work, show what he can do. And for Johnny Butler, that was the first time in his career where he has hit two home runs in a game. Ties a career high with a four-hit day. And you said all coming back after that strikeout against the starter for Virginia Tech, Anthony Simonelli. A couple of former JUCO guys there, Johnny Butler and Austin Murr, good pals. Chatting it up and feeling good with NC State in control against the Hokies. How many two home run games you have in college, any that you recall? I know you hit a bunch of bombs your junior year, right? I had a, f I had a few. We can go back and check. I had one with three. Push-ups. You had, had a three home run game? Yeah, you can go and baseball reference it. <laughs> 17 make sure, bombs make sure, as a junior for you. Make sure it really happened. Wilson misses, and the runner stays put at first. Batter here, by the way, is the guy who came on to pinch run for D'Angelo Giles last time, Carson Falskin. True freshman out of California. One of the good freshmen, according to D1 Baseball, coming into the year, top 40. In the ACC. I got you down at least for a, a two home run game against Coastal Carolina in 2002. I'm not doubting you. I'm just, uh, I've got more research to do. Yeah, keep working. <laughs> Comes inside from Wilson. Let's see if What's that there. feeling like, though, in all seriousness? Like when you're having a four-hit day and you've done it in four straight at-bats, couple home runs, I, I, you're probably just walking on water in the dugout, right? Nothing, yeah, nothing can get you out. It doesn't matter who's pitching, what's happening. There's that breaking ball. A strikeout, and there's one away. Just probably feel as good as you can imagine. Hanging out in the dugout. Nice 12-6 break right there. Yeah, but no, there, there's there's no better feeling. I mean, you play the game, obviously, it, it, it's such a fun game, and there's so many highs and lows, but when it's, when it's clicking, there is nothing like it. The biggest heater you were ever on, college, minors, whoa. What do you remember, like when you were, you could do no wrong? Ooh. I'm testing your memory here. Well, there was a, I'm going to go back to a spring training game against Rob Nen. I took a 99 mile an hour fastball deep in, when he was down Ooh. doing, not, not rehab, Rob but Nett, just Rob Nen, did you say? Yeah, I did. I yeah. name dropped. It's a, it's a long time ago, so a lot of people listening probably don't even know who it is. Rob with two Bs. Yeah. Three-time big league all-star. The former All-American, Adam Greenberg. Junior year at North Carolina in 2002. 
Uh, I'm told you also had a lot of triples and stolen bases. If the ball was hit into the outfield, and this is, I try to teach it. Ball's hit in the outfield, it's a triple. You, you just think, of, you, you go, that's what you, because you're everyone else coasting into second base. They give up a base. That misses, and Voita Menchik works a walk. So out of the box, you're thinking, I'm going to be sprinting until, what, like a third of the way around second if I need to slam on the brakes there? Well, it's more, it, it's not even that. It's just more go hard. Like, the ball's in the outfield. My thought was three. So I'm, I mean, I wasn't a big rounding guy. Like, I didn't take a huge round, uh, like, in foul territory at, at first. I was more straight to the bag, boom, as fast as I can. So I'm already in my turn going to third base. This is bounced to second. The flip, and they will only get the force. Two down. Torres over to third, so runners at the corners here with two away in the home half of the eighth inning as Brown bounced into that. Brings up JT Jarrett. Told you about his father, Link, of course, Notre Dame's head coach, the Irish, right now in the process of traveling back from the Boston area, playing in Brighton, Mass, over the weekend at Boston College. Bouncer left side, and Schobel slings it in time to retire Jarrett. And the inning's over. We go to the ninth, 11-3 NC State. Ninth inning at the Doak. They spell it out. And NC State's been in control against Virginia Tech in this one. 11-3 the advantage. And the Wolfpack are trying to lock up a series win before the finale in the back half of the doubleheader. Coming soon after this one goes final. Dalton Feeney still out there working for NC State. And he is facing the right-hand hitter in Fritz Genther. Again, the year's the starting shortstop. Lines this one over Torres into left field and a leadoff knock. And the good vibes continue for Virginia Tech these last three innings offensively. That's got to feel good for Genther right there. Lost the starting starting role and get an opportunity. Always good to get some knocks. Genther, second year freshman from just south of Albany, New York. Two and a half weeks ago, Nick Bittison came back. They shuffled up the middle infield a bit. And here is Bittison. Kicks away from Tresh, and no advancement, down by eight. No, I'm not looking to be overly aggressive. Good job by Tresh, though, just keeping that ball even remotely in front of him. <laughs> NC State pitching-wise, they got Six innings of one hit ball from Reed Johnston. Through 91 pitches, Chris Villeman came on in the seventh, ran into trouble, and ever since, it's been Dalton Feeney. Reed Johnston throwing 91 pitches, that, that might feel like a side session for him. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's gonna come in relief <laughs> in game two. There's a strike. On 3-0. I mean, I, I guess there's, you, you have to throw some of your guys at some point, but I mean, the way that he was going, he was just, he was dominant. Full count. We expect to see for NC State, the right-hander, Matt Willidson. 
in the back half of the doubleheader. And for Virginia Tech, expect to see the left-hander Shane Connolly, the transfer from the Citadel. 3-2. And Bittison strikes out. Out number one in the ninth inning. Just perfect spot. Great stuff from Feeney. You see his four strikeouts since he came on in the seventh. And he starts out with ball one to Cade Swisher. For Virginia Tech, meanwhile, staring down back-to-back -back series losses. Dropped two out of three against Georgia Tech in Blacksburg last weekend. Fell 15-11 in the first game. Came back in one Saturday behind that great Simonelli start. And then fell Sunday in the finale in the rubber game 11-4. Did have a midweek win against VMI on Tuesday when they came from behind in the late innings. Two and one. Virginia Tech 22 in the country. Unranked to begin the year. And after the ACC's opening weekend when they won the series at Miami, Virginia Tech leapt into the polls. Ranked for the first time in eight years. Three balls and a strike as the Hokies continue to work counts. A lot to like offensively the last few frames, like we said. Yeah, I mean, it's carrying momentum into game two. Um, definitely put together much more quality at-bats, obviously, once Reed Johnston left. But nonetheless... Good at bats or good at bats, doesn't matter who you're facing, you still have to do it. And right there, Cade Swisher does just that, works the walk. Well, this is one of a couple doubleheaders going on in the ACC today, not including Florida State and Georgia Tech, who had to resume the game yesterday that got suspended in the eighth inning. But down in Clemson, South Carolina, the Tigers are hosting Wake Forest for a doubleheader today. And just moments ago, Clemson walked off in game one of the doubleheader, and they secured the series win because Davis Sharp hit a walk-off two-run home run for Clemson. They didn't play yesterday. They won the opener on Friday, and they have claimed the series. And Sharp hit a tank. Yeah, Clemson was scuffled last couple of weekends and they were they were right at the cusp of breaking that top 25 and really being in contention and sure enough they come back this weekend and win a series so it's kind of how it's how it's been for the ACC that really the middle of the pack is just beating up each other and a neat moment for Sharp who has had to deal with Injury issues as it relates to pitching this year. A very talented two-way player and a preseason All-American who hasn't yet really got it going with the bat, too. And an awesome moment for him in walk-off fashion against Wake Forest. Gehrig Ebel, the freshman catcher, lifts one to center. And NC State is one out away from a series win. A reminder, we'll be over on ACC Network for the final game of this series, the back half of the doubleheader, 4 o'clock Eastern time. As they say, the top of the hour. We will get that one started after some lacrosse being played right now over on ACC Network. Big thanks to our crew today, by the way. They'll be with us for that game as well. The masterminds who make it all happen, steering the ship, led by Matt Curry, our producer, Josh Monk, our director, and the whole squad in Raleigh.
our statistician, John Tobias. He does a great job. He is still awake here in the ninth <laughs> inning. A long day for JT doing yeoman's work as always. Second trip to the plate for Jonah Seegers, who walked his first plate appearance, leading off the eighth inning. Dalton Feeney's been good. And Seegers doesn't chase. Just missed. Good, good miss, though, with two strikes. Just off the plate. Comes the one, two. Mentioned Seeger really good approach, patient, works counts, takes good, takes tough pitches. Let's see if he can extend this game for Virginia Tech. Strike three called, and Feeney fans him and completes an NC State series win before the finale coming up here. They have won the first two games of this series, and they take the series with the Hokies. Johnny Butler with four hits, including a pair of home runs, and Adam, really good stuff all the way around from the Wolfpack here in this one. That'll wrap it up, 11-3 the final score. We remind you we've got the second game coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern time over on ACC Network. For Adam Greenberg, our producer Matt Curry, director Josh Monk and our entire crew, Mike Monaco saying so long and thanks for watching. We'll talk to you at the top of the hour on ACCN.